what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lursey. Welcome back to the channel. We've got another Photoshop video for you today. This time we're going to look at one of the newer neural filters called Colorize. Now if you've been following Photoshop, you know that they've kind of been slowly releasing these neural filters uh, every few months and they've got more on the way. But the Colorize one is one of the newer ones and we'll take a look at it. What it will do is take a black and white image and add the color back to it. So it'll be interesting to see how accurate it is and how quickly it works. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro. All right, so these are the two images we're gonna work with today. One is just a straight black and white image. It's an old photograph of a baseball player. Uh, we don't really know what the image should look like. Uh, we have no idea what color this uniform and socks and things were, but we'll just let Photoshop have a go at it and see what it comes up with. This image is already in color, so we know what it uh, should look like. What we're gonna do on it, convert it to black and white, then I'm gonna run this black and white image through the neural filter and see what colors it comes up with and we can compare those back to what they really were and see how accurate it is. So I thought that'd be an interesting experiment to try as well. So these are the two we're going to try. Let's start with the baseball player. Now you do want to make sure that you are updated to uh, you know the new version uh, of CC so that you have this feature. If you're not seeing it, it's probably you just haven't done an update uh, in quite a while. But uh, we're going to go ahead and into filter, neural filters. And you do want to make sure you're uh, on the internet while you're doing this because it's going to do this stuff. Everything's processed in the cloud. And uh, if your computer's not hooked up to the internet, it's not going to work. So anyways, these are under the Colorize is one of the betas. So it's not necessarily a ready-to-go filter. And I think you'll see that as we, as we go through and play with it a little bit. It's um, still kind of a rough draft but still kind of makes it interesting to play around with so we're going to give it a go click on colorize and turn it on and you will see over here to the right it'll take a second to work and there we go and it's done a pretty good job with the greens um, you can see that the trees and the bushes and things like that are all green and they look pretty good sky blue works pretty well where you start running into problems is in the fabric for example and it's pretty subtle but you know the two legs are different colors this one's much more like a, a gr light gray blue bluish tint to it this one's got much more of a warmer brown tint to it and so the two legs just look completely different if we look over here at the source image you can see this one's in shadow maybe a little bit and it's a little bit darker but they shouldn't be two different colors like this and um, I think this is one of the areas that Colorize Filter ha struggles with right now is knowing that a continuous piece of fabric should stay the same color um, and it's not doing that here. Uh, you'll see that here in the hand as well how it goes from pink to green to pink uh, to dark something there and uh, so that's kind of off. You'll really see it here in the face if we zoom in a little bit you'll see that this part of the face is very kind of pink skin tone much more brownish tan skin tone up in that part of the face and so it takes things that should be continuous you know this should all mostly be the same color maybe different lightnesses different tones but the color should be uh, pretty close on this and so it's not really giving us a very ac very accurate representation there you can kind of see it even in the belt as well uh, where this looks like a light purple color and then back here it looks black or navy. Uh, you see a little bit of color seeping up there on the uniform. So it's struggling with the uniform. Done a great job with the greenery. So I think if you were using this as a jumping off point, you're going to go back and hand color this image. You could run this colorize and start from right here and then kind of just correct some of these things and I think you'd be pretty close to having a, a a nice image pretty quickly rather than starting from scratch you know even if we look at the bat here it's more or less given us a uh, a brown wood tone that kind of looks right for that bat you do see other little colors streaking through here but um, it's pretty close so I think all in all for a one-click thing it gets you pretty good now you can see over here there's a few different 
sliders you can play around with that are not super functional. For example, these color sliders are only affecting, I mean, they're affecting the entire image. So if we go to red, for example, it's going to give everything this red cast. So this is not very helpful for, uh, you know, the skin tones have too much red or the uniform has too much blue. You can't really dial it out that way. If you just want to give the overall image, you know, a little bit of warmth, give it a little bit of red and yellow, you can do that and it'll give the whole image a little bit but uh, it's not going to work as well that way. Uh, you can play with the saturation where you bring it down if you want just to have a little bit of that color or bump it up to really throw those colors into overdrive. So some of these things you can play with that um, will work and, and to, to some extent, but you know, like the saturation, for example, is going to make the good colors look great. It's going to make the problems even more pronounced. You do have the ability down here with the profile that you can take one of these like retro red or something and it will kind of give it this overall look which a lot of times ruins the image like this. Um, we could try you know retro brown and it's kind of kind of give it this color shift but you can see the face has gone purple so you know maybe this is just something they're still working with. Um, and you can dial that down, of course, but I have found that a lot of that does not work, that I generally don't use many of these sliders at all, but uh, rather just use the one click and see how close it gets me. It is worth noting down here at the bottom that you can say, uh, are you satisfied with the results? And it will pop up a little thing here where you could say, uh, you know, face was wrong color, uh, pants were wrong color, and you can include the image. And I do try to do that um, whenever possible because I think the more of those they get, uh, it's going to help them figure out where the AI is going wrong and things like that. So uh, you can definitely help the process by when you do an image, um, go ahead and fill that out and let them know and send them the image and show them what worked and what didn't. That's that guy for now. Let's go ahead and I always like to do it as a new layer. Hit OK. And let's take a look at this one. So before we jump in, let's look at the color version. So you can see she's got kind of a um, reddish brown tint to the hair. This color here, what would you call that? Kind of a, a warm khaki color. Uh, through here we'll come back and compare it. And uh, white here and just a gray background. And so that kind of get a, a look at that. Turn it back to black and white. I don't think it's going to cheat and look at that bottom layer. I guess there's no way of knowing, but I'm going to trust that it's not. I guess we'll know if it comes out perfect. Hit Neural Filter. Let's drop down here to Colorize and turn it on. Give it a second to work. You can see it working up here. Okay. Uh, as you can see, some parts look really good. Some parts look a little ridiculous. Starting up here, I think the hair looks pretty good. Um, let's do this. Let's go ahead and obviously this is way out of whack. Let's go ahead and just keep what we have here. Go ahead and hit OK so that we can get back outside. And let's take a look at the before and the after. So the hair here, I think the hair is pretty accurate. Take a look at the actual hair. Pretty close. I think that's a really nice job of figuring out the hair color. When we look at the background, which was just a gray color, kind of a cool gray, it's definitely warmed it up, given it some color. I don't know that that's the end of the world, other than, again, we're getting this situation where you can see this and this are very different colors. Much more blue up here, much more warm down here. If we look at the original, it's pretty consistent with this kind of gray, slate gray color throughout. So I'm not crazy about that. Skin tone overall is pretty even. Let's look at the original again. Um, I feel like this color in here's got a little more pink to it than like the forehead does, but it's acceptable. Uh, white on the sweater, but elephant in the room is the jacket. I mean, the jacket is way off. Um, from that kind of light brown color to this super cool red purple combo. Uh, completely missed on that one. Now I don't know if that's just because brown is a hard color to identify, this kind of khaki color or what, um, 
But again, we've run into the problem of the same piece uh, has showing different colors. You know, that the jacket, both sides are completely different colors. Um, the, co the collar itself is even changing colors. So it did a terrible job with the jacket, um, but pretty good up here. So again, this wouldn't be a terrible jumping off point. I think it would get you in the ballpark for the skin tones and the hair. And, you know, this part would actually be a pretty easy part to work with on the jacket. Now, one thing I do notice is up here, it's spilling over into the back. Uh, ground along here and uh, uh, when you get in a little closer on this there are some issues uh, something along the edge here so it's not perfect and again I don't know a situation where you'd start with color and then recolor it like that but more just a matter of trying to see if that's all you had to, to work with was this black and white what could it come up with and you know like I, I think on the important part the face and hair I think it does a pretty good job uh, it's this stuff that's that's way off. But again, if you were restoring an old photograph, uh, unless there was some sort of sentimental meaning to it, the color of the jacket would not really make a big difference. So that wouldn't be the end of the world. So it's all recoverable things. And it is, don't forget, in the beta stages that uh, hopefully will bring more improvements as it progresses on. But again, looking from there to there, it's not terrible. The jacket is terrible, but the face is not terrible. And I think that um, for a one-click filter is not too bad uh, for the beta stages. And there you have it. Pretty efficient tool. It's going to miss some of the colors, not going to be 100% accurate. It's got no way of knowing what those colors really were, but it's certainly going to get you in the ballpark. And I think anytime you've got a tool that can get you close to where you need to be really quickly and then let you kind of take it from there, I think it's certainly something worth looking into. So for me, it's a pretty cool tool. Love to hear your thoughts and uh, see if you've had much use for that neural filter. Either way, I hope you found this helpful and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.